Boy, has this video been a long time coming. I mean, really, I think this device was announced in 2019, and I knew when I first saw it, I knew there was something special about it, and I knew I had to have it. It was its own unique thing. It wasn't trying to be the best of the best, just its own thing. I knew I had to have it. So last year, pre-orders finally went live for it, and I finally have it a year since then, the play date. <sighs> I'm not going to lie, I was starting to get impatient, but alas, here it is actually in my hand. And I just wanted to show you the box, because the box is fun. We made Playdate just for fun. It's a little handheld game system. If it, oh, I ain't Mother Goose. If you want to read it, you could read it. Uh, made by Panic in cooperation with Teenage Engineering. No, not not literal child labor. It's um, uh, some sort of uh, STEM group, I believe. Uh, STEM engineering type thing. And that's the name of the group, not actual child labor. Panic, yeah, that's actually the same company that made Untitled Goose Game, and funny enough, we will come back to that. Even simpler so is the box for the cover, because I got the combo deal where you got the console and the cover. You're covered. Just pop it in, play to protect it in your pocket, perfect. Made by Panic. So yeah, that's about all we have for the boxes, although I almost forgot to show you the inside of the main box. Have fun. Well, <laughs> I have been. And you get a yellow USB-C cable to match with the Playdate console. Very cool, very cool. And then there's this little getting started guide. That. And fun text on the back. Get in there, you. Get. There we go. Pack all nicely. There you go. Sweet dreams. So where's the Playdate itself? Oh, I have it over here. And is it even on? Okay, there we go. Well, yeah, this doesn't even matter if it was on or not, because, well, sadly, this would be where I review the play date. However, yeah. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and take a closer look at that. Yeah, no, nah, I'm just messing with you. This is a prank app. <laughs> There's so many weird random apps that exist for this thing. Cracked Screen Prank is one of them. Uh, um, cracked Screen Park. That's the first time I noticed that, because I've sworn it said prank. Well, yeah, there's my joke opening. <laughs> so yeah, there's the case. It's got cutouts for the buttons. And the screw holes actually have, like, holes, literal holes in the center post that actually go all the way through. So it just sits on these little metal pegs here. It's all magnetic. So once it's in, yeah, it's, yeah, it's in. Look at me. And then, yet yeah, little cover. It looks like, um, I think their website says it makes it look like a little ice cream sandwich, and I think it kind of does. I'm not sure what flavor that'd be. Anyway, eh, get out of there, you. Yeah, did you see that? Look, a headphone jack. I swear that's a real headphone jack, guys. It actually works. Whew, it's like ancient archaeology. There's a microphone, USB-C port, D-pad, B&A buttons, a menu button, and a crank. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is kind of not really the selling point of the console, but this is how Panic is basically saying, hey, you know, we're not trying to be your next PS Vita that you carry everywhere that emulates anything from the NES to the PlayStation 19. But we're our own thing. It's a black and white screen. It's not backlit. Why couldn't it be backlit? Come on. <sighs> but I digress. It's just trying to have its own identity in the handheld game market and yeah this is it and it's a really neat little device uh, the edges aren't rounded they're actually like very pointy 90 degrees if you could see so it, y y you feel it when you hold it but at the same time it doesn't feel bad it feels right and I don't know it's kind of hard to explain uh, the build quality though I guess we'll speak of that is very nice um, it's rock solid it does not feel cheap at all it feels like it's something that has a decent price tag attached to it and well the price it's one uh shoot what is it like 179 i think if you want to order the console 200 if you want to order it with the case the case is 30 dollars separately and i guess before we get into it we'll just say it now the problem is if you want to order one you're not gonna see it till next year um the production on these has obviously slowed down what with everything going on in the world so, I think there's about 20,000 of these out right now, and they're working on the third group of pre-order batches, and then going forward, yeah, anything that's ordered 
will ship out in 2023. So if you order one now, you do have to wait a little bit for it. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. So these are all the games I have on it. And one more thing, speaking about the charm I mentioned that I noticed with this console, it kind of reminds me of, if you remember the Cybeco, I, I did a video on the Cybeco a long, long time ago. But that handheld always had a lot of charm for me because that felt like it was... It wasn't trying to be the best of the best for the time, yet it wanted to be used for messaging and stuff with other Cybercos. But it was it was in its own niche, you know, its own category. And the designs of them, the different colors they came in, it was just fun. It was its own thing. And this is what that reminds me of. So I think what we'll do is we'll look at the games that you get with it, and then we could take a look at the games I've downloaded separately. So the way they do games is we're in season one right now. There's the, That's the only season of games that are currently available. It communicates over Wi-Fi to do stuff like download new games. And instead of getting the whole season at once, which I think is something like 25 games, they give them to you uh, two games a week. And for all the games, I think that ends up being like four months worth of time. So I actually, I do like that. Uh, a while back, they were talking about maybe having all the games available, boom, in one shot for people that might want that. That never came to fruition, it seems, so this is the only way you can get Season 1. You just have to wait. But I do like that because I think that gives me more time to enjoy each game on its own instead of being like, oh, here's, here's a thousand games on it. Yeah, just help yourself. So you don't know where to start with that. Am I rambling? Mm, yeah, probably. Well, let's just pick a game then. Uh, so Casual Birder and Whitewater Wipeout, those were the two that it started with. So these are the oldest in Season 1, and that's currently the newest one I have. I don't have any more because I haven't hit that point yet, but I don't want to wait four months to review this thing because I want to show it to you guys. This thing, I've been playing this thing a lot. <laughs> I have been playing it a lot, maybe even more than I thought I'd be playing with it. So this one... Oops turn the volume down. I didn't get too far into it, but the premise is it's kind of like an RPG and you have to take photos of birds. Yes. You, uh, oh, no, that's how do we open the camera again? Oh, wait, we turn the crank, I think. That changes the menu option up there, and then, there we go. I can never figure out how to get that dang woodpecker that flies back and forth. I feel like whenever I have my camera open, he's nowhere to be found. And then, when I put the camera away, I feel like he's there. Well, the pecking noise is really annoying, so we're going to leave that screen. Uh, what are you guys doing? Mom said I can't play in the cave because I'll get lost. Maybe she doesn't know that if you have a camera with a flash, well, then you can... Oh, I thought that said sus. Jesus. Well, then you can see in the dark. And when you open it up, it'll point right at you. I guess I'm too young to play with cameras anyway. Well, then. Yeah, so that's Casual Birder. I, I'm definitely not going to show off every game. In fact, I think what I'll do is I'll show off some of my favorites. Whitewater Wipeout. This is a high-score arcade runner kind of game. You are a surfer dude uh, surfing on an endless tidal wave. And you have to keep jumping to get more air. That's what happens when I play through the viewfinder. Let's try it again, but this time using my actual eyeballs. Okay, yeah, I'm doing better. So the more jumps you do, the more speed and height you gain. Eventually you could do as much as a quadruple flip. I don't know if you could do a quintuple flip. I've never pulled one of those off. Turn the volume down in case it was too loud for the microphone. But yeah, Whitewater Wipeout, a fun high score game. I apologize if some of that got out of frame or anything like that, but I wasn't playing through the viewfinder. <laughs> Here is... Uh, wait for it, because I forget the full name. Yes, this is Cranklin in Time Travel Adventures. So instead of using, like, the D-pad or the buttons to move Cranklin, you use the crank. So the world around you is always moving at normal speed, normal pace, normal time, except for Cranklin. So you turn the crank to make him move. I hit a boomerang. See... She's disappointed because the goal is to get to the end where your girlfriend is waiting for you to go on your date with her. 
I'm trying to get that glare from the light out of the screen, but I am not having the best luck with that. And for that, I apologize. Where did I go? Oh, I went in like a pit underground. Okay. And there was a pig. I probably had to hide in the pit from the pig. Okay. So yeah, that's a fun platformer game. Is that a platformer game? I don't know, but it's fun. Boogie Loops is just a music maker type thing. Sammy's off in the background uh, sneezing. Pick Pack Pup is a puzzle game, and this game was funny. Uh, you play the role of a dog who's working in an Amazon warehouse type of environment, and you have to pack boxes. That is your job. You are an Amazon drone. Uh, I just burped. And this is Pick Pack Pup. So there was a level where the pup was replaced with the goose from Untitled Goose Game, the same one, because it's the same company. And what the goose was doing is he was trying to pull pieces off the play area, and it was it was a fun level. I do hope he comes back. Uh, if you put the gems in a box, you get more, uh, I want to say points, but they're dollars. Anyway, yeah, that is Pick Pack Pup. Uh, Flipper Lifter is like an elevator action type game. You just move, use the crank to move the elevator up and down. It's kind of, um, I forget the name, but it's, it's, it's a high score type of game. Lost Your Marbles is a visual novel type game, which I haven't tried yet. Um, Echoic Memory. Did I try this one? I don't remember if I tried this one. Continue Story. Apparently I did. What was this game? Oh, uh, is this another uh, visual story type game? Okay. Yeah, that's what it looks like. The, the, the screen in person looks really nice. I mean, it almost looks like an e-ink screen, but it's not. It's just a uh, monochrome 2-bit screen. But uh, why couldn't they put a backlight in there? Come on. A backlight. I have to... I feel like it's 1999 again with my Game Boy Color. I'm angling it towards the light so I can see it. It's a very reflective screen. It really is, but um, I just want the option, man. Give me my uh, give me my backlight. Demon Quest 85, that was some other type of RPG. Interesting, when I went to open that for the first time, there was a message that popped up on the screen. It said something like, uh, this game involves moderate use of vulgarity and mature themes. Continue. And I was like, okay. Uh, if I was into RPGs, that sounds like it'd be a fun time. This one I don't remember the name of, but you are that ball right there. You use the crank to turn within your circle. B to go to another black circle. I rotated the crank the wrong way. <laughs> there you go. You got to get him to the end of the level. This level is very crowded. And there's no way I'm going to try to play it through a viewfinder. But this is a fun game. I really enjoy this one. And that is the most recent Season 1 game I have. So let's look at the ones I've downloaded elsewhere. This is Pool. It's just a game of billiards. But what... Oh, did it remember my game? Oh my god, it remembered my last game I played. So you use the crank to rotate the pool cue. You hold left on the D-pad or the A button to kind of there we go yeah you see the Q pulling back and then flick the crank forward really fast like bleh, like that and there you go i don't know why i was still holding left but yeah graphically it's you know not much to write home about but what can you say about a game of pool right this is actually a lot of fun my complaint though is you're not playing against a cpu player there doesn't seem to be an option for that so you have to play against a human player or you could just, you know, do what I'm doing, goof around and play the game by yourself. Let's see, can I, uh, I'm try to sync that stripe. Huh. Dang it. Okay. <laughs> that didn't count. Nobody saw that. Uh, let's go home. What do we got next? Crazy Gravity. I believe this one is a prototype, not quite finished yet. So I remember there's a debug mode in here somewhere. Uh, it's like a... A lunar lander type game. I thought you used the crank, but I guess I might have been wrong. But yeah, up is your thrust, left and right changes direction, and you just have to get to the end goal. Simple enough, and yeah, the game seems complete, it seems functional, but I, I think I remember... Yeah, there we go. Debug. 
and then when you have that enabled, you just go through walls like it's no dang thing. You just go through the walls. It don't matter. Who cares about physics. You do what you want. Can you? Oh, you can just land on the bottom of the screen too. Okay, that is that. As much as I want to go through all these, I can't. I just don't have the time. Pac-Man clone. This one, I'll show it because I can't really explain this one. <clears throat> Pardon me while it's loading. There you go. So what you do, use the D-pad and the crank to try to fit these priceless artifacts through the laser grid. And if you do, you get them. You get points. And it's, I don't know, for some reason, it's oddly satisfying. Just lining it up just right. I always go for this one with... Wait, 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 wait. No, I hit the left just by a slight bit. I did get a perfect score on this game once, I swear. I even took a screenshot. Uh, what do we got next? This one, I'll just explain it. You are somebody working in a law office trying to shred documents with the crank as fast as you can, making sure you don't get caught by your coworker who occasionally comes in the room to check on you. Uh, so <laughs> when you don't want to get caught, you have to dock the crank. You have to put it away. Um, and then when he leaves the room, take it out, start shredding documents again. And um, it, it sounds weird, but it works out pretty well. These two are RPGs. I haven't played with them too much because I'm just not an RPG guy. I'm sorry. Uh, this was a port of a game on the Pebble smartwatch that they brought over to the playdate. Oh my gosh, I had a brain fart there. But yeah, you cannot go back. I had this game crash the playdate twice. So we're going to skip that. <laughs> Cracked screen, you already saw that. Cranky Bird, that's a port of, uh, what is it? Payoro from WarioWare. I'll show you real quick. Look, he's cranky. Journey. Oh, no, I'm thinking of another game. This is a kind of platformish game where you have to collect all the objects on the screen, but the physics are kind of Flappy Bird-like. Finally heading home. It's going to be a long trek. Ugh or humph? I'm hit humph. At least it's not near the stinking mine. Fresh air is a real blessing. Now get cranking. I guess now we started the game. Okay, we are approaching 18 minutes for this video, so I mean, we gotta really speed up the process. I, I think it was Fish and Feathers that was the Pyoro clone. That's a Bomberman clone. Uh, Tapeworm Disco Puzzle. That is a very fun game with an amazing soundtrack. I'm gonna save that for last. Escape from Complex 32. You use the crank to rotate your ship and make sure you don't hit any walls. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I gotta show you this one. I'm gonna turn up the volume all the way. This game is called Play Roll. So you use the crank to actually move the ball through this obstacle course. Here, allow me to demonstrate. I realized I could probably get copyright struck for that, so I should stop rotating the crank. <laughs> But it literally goes through the entire chorus if you just keep cranking it, and you can play with it at different speeds, too. Hold on. Wait. Yeah, I don't think that'll get content ID. <laughs> there you go. That's uh, Play Roll. Very fun platforming game. That's a Yahtzee clone. That's a solitaire game. Crunky's an arcade game. There's this little bouncing doodle jump type character. Use the crank to move him. Pictoad Collection, that is a collection of little puzzle games. Mash Gadgets, kind of like a fidget uh, device type thing for the play date. You can play with the buttons, play with the crank, something to pass time. Tetris Clone, a joke that's worth 99 cents. This game actually did cost a dollar. And you bounce a little man. Oh, screw it. I'll just show it to you. You bounce this. I forgot about the song. Uh, yeah, so you're supposed to keep this little bouncy man on the crank, collecting the stars to advance the storyline in this joke. And it's a really long joke. I've never gotten to the end of it. And yes, every time you drop him, the joke restarts. Good luck hearing the entire joke. Um, that is a pie cross type game. Dragon Hunt Adventure. It's another RPG, but again, not an RPG guy. I'm sorry. Uh, which one did we want to come back to? Yes, Tapeworm Disco Puzzle. This one I just got to show you. But listen. That 
That music kicks. That is awesome. I love the music that can come out of this thing. So this is a indie developed game that came out for the Playdate and also the NES. Yeah, you heard that correctly. He actually developed an NES version and you can buy it on cartridge. Or you could buy a digital version where he just gives you the ROM file. Totally legit, look it up. Anyway, in Tapeworm Disco Puzzle, you are the worm on the bottom there. And if you press the A button, you can switch between left side and right side. These items increase the length you can go as the snake. And you have to get all the collectibles in each level. And there are a hundred of them. But listen to this freaking music. The soundtrack in this game is amazing. I'd imagine it's even better if you had some corded headphones to plug in, but I don't have any corded headphones. But seriously, the, the soundtrack kept me going through this game, and it's a fun game too. It's, it's kind of like a puzzle, figuring out the right way to go. Uh, these are warp portals, but yeah, fun game, fun soundtrack. All right, you get the point. So I guess in a nutshell, that is the play date. It is a handheld console that's its own unique niche, its own category, just trying to do its own thing with a very fun gimmick. This crank is awesome. It, it's very sturdy too. Never does it feel like it's flimsy or you're going to break it. Nah, this... You could hang it from the crank. It's totally fine. Very solidly built. I don't have depth perception when I try to do that through the viewfinder, hence I miss docking it. So that is the play date. There's a lot of fun games on it. There's a surprising amount of people developing games for it. You can get SDKs for free. They'll give you everything you need to develop for it. Ordering one is a little tricky right now, but if you do get a hold of one, they are a lot of fun. That's the lock screen that's there when you lock it. You can power it off full if you want to save battery life. But look at that little personality, though, right? You lock it, and if you hit a button, press lock twice. So if I press it once, one eye wakes up. If I press it again, the other eye lights up. See? It just, it's, got, it's got this charm, man. It's really fun. Even, <laughs> even in the, the two or so times the console did crash, it, like, it fully crashed the system... Even the crash was fun, right? Because what it did is the image froze for about 10 seconds, and then it changed to a picture of building blocks, like a tower of them, and they fell down. And it was like, oops, your play date crashed. Press, press A to restart. Like, man, I can't even be mad. The, the crash screen is cute and adorable. I can't even be mad. So anyway, yeah, ranting again. This was well worth the wait. I hope you can get a hold of one soon if you are interested in one. Try not to support a scalper on eBay if you can. Don't feed the scalpers. It's Don't let them continue to breed. That be it. I will catch you guys next time with something probably equally as goofy. Okay, bye. Thank you guys so much for watching. Huge shout out to the people listed here. These are the Patreon supporters that allow me to keep doing what I do on YouTube. Wouldn't be able to do it without you guys. There's a Discord server in the description if you want to join there. And on Twitch, I stream every week on Tuesday. Come hang out with us.